There we go. Definitely worth it for us to sacrifice one or two CS for that, in my opinion. And then we've got Clinic coming on the test, but it's been totally spotted out by the Observer Wards of Vici. They saw him come up the stairs, so they should be able to be catched. Now, you're going to try and turn it around, potentially. We've got Earthshaker coming in, and they will block Clinic off his super moving forward here. Nice shot thrown out, Clinic forcing them back up the stairs, and he's going to be okay. They've not quite got the damage, as you said. The levels that Super has, he just doesn't have the amount of damage with those raises to be able to blow up that tusk. Yeah, they are very, very nervous in the mid lane. If Dendi lands a stun, Shadow oh, might actually die. Oh, this is Dendi, needs to be careful. Wait, what? Oh, it's Ice Ice, he's coming with the red jump, and Dendi with the Laguna Blade, and now Light Strike around. Ice Ice Ice, he might find a second, Funny with the Snowball. Ice Ice Ice, he's got no mana, pulls the charges, he's got enough double kill for Dendi. But Super, he turns it around, finds a double kill for himself. It's going to be a double kill to both sides there in the mid lane, as Vici very nicely recover against one uh, Na'Vi were able to set out to do so there. Man, that was absolutely crazy. I think, I actually think it was on purpose that FY lifted the siege creep with telekinesis because he couldn't reach the hero he was looking for. So he wanted to get the drop down stun. He didn't reach that either though. And Navi got up to a really good start in that fight, but Super with the two turnaround race kills, probably a minor victory for VG considering how important it is for them to get their shadow feet back in the game. And now he's actually pretty much tying Galena, I think, on net worth. Only 300 behind all of a sudden, even though he is a whopping 17 CS and 17 denies behind. It was a massive, massive fight, yeah, indeed for the Shadow King. And uh, so far, both the carries, How and Force, pretty much been left undisturbed. And we haven't seen it either, didn't have any pressure from the, uh, each team support. A lot of focus around the mid lane, which I think understandably so, because Lina and Shadow Fiend are really, and they're, they're the kind of heroes that are going to get the pace going. If Denny gets off to a good start, we're going to see him get an early Yule Scepter online, and they should be able to find solo pickoffs across the map, especially even on heroes like the position one, like Luna, who is relatively squishy in the early game. They're definitely going to be looking to combine Dendi with Phonic as early as possible to gank key targets. Uh, Phonic has tried to rotate mid with success in that situation. I mean, he, he did get two assists. They obviously didn't directly win the fight, but at least the, the combination worked out. Unfortunately for him, he's only level three. And you're comparing that to the Isis Ice Quap, who's level five and a half. We've got quite a bit out of that first blood, as it would seem. Extra bit of gold and experience from that is very helpful. Bit of focus on Ice 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 here, he's out still, just hit the sidelines. Just keeping an eye on him, Dendi has backed off, he had a lot of nice stacks, and there's a triple stack and a double stack here in the Rainy Jungle, that Dendi's going to be able to clean up, and, and that's going to be putting pretty much uh, right bang on to his Yule Scepter at this point of the game, very early on, if he closes that gap. And that's going to allow him to solo kill the Shadow Fiend, solo kill the Quat, solo kill the Lina, oh sorry, the Luna. He can actually solo kill every single hero on the Dire team. Uh, none of them is tanky enough to survive the full burst, I do believe. And you've got to remember as well, Snakeo, he's nearly halfway to, to level 6, getting the relocate. I mean, if they have to relocate in Yules, as you said, anyone that's caught on their own on the map is going to die. It's possible Hal can actually survive it because he has strength treads as well as Aquila. It gives him quite a lot of stats. He's got plus 16 strength. So. But that is the only target that he can't find, and there is no doubt that Navier... Look, I'm going to be kill hungry here. In the mid lane, so looks I like uh, FY. It's just <laughs> that that's an invisible <laughs> IO. <laughs> yeah, Andy, the invis, hard to tell sometimes. Snaker reveals it. Still 3-3 at the moment, 9 minutes in, Clinic, able to find himself with a bit of space and time up here in this top lane, trying to work those levels up, but Hal finds himself a tower. Very classic safe lane Luna. This is what Luna is extremely good at as a carry, is pushing towers early, has great base damage, is a very natural Aquila carrier. Um, of course, if you have multiple heroes in the lane, just the, the benefit of having the Lunar Blessing just makes this push very, very swift. And he is indeed, as expected, going for the drum buildup, it looks like. He's got a Bracer in addition to his Treads Aquila, so very, very heavy on the stats early on. Already 1,100 health. I think he might actually be the tankiest hero on the map right now. He is, in fact. And that is a hero that's usually very squishy nine minutes in, but combining his very good early farm with his item choices, he's going to be uh, difficult to deal with. Sadly, of course, Avor still working towards that battle here. He has the Ring of Health picked up. Maybe got enough here to finish off that Perseverance. Ice 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 trying to do what he can in terms of harassing Avor, but of course, at this point, not scared at all on this anti edge of that corpse. He's got a point in the Spell Shield to help him out in lane. Seneco and Arstar just clearing up some camps in the jungle. Seneco only 100 XP away from having that relocate online. Ooh, Ice 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 needs to be careful here. They should be able to just blink himself out of this one. Na'Vi will be able to secure themselves the rune, following up the bottle here for Seneco. And uh, is that yours? Yep. Is that done? That's Ten done? minutes. That's a pretty good time. It's actually a very good time. <laughs> With the items he has, he has bottle, wand, as well as an ult. So, 
looking good here for Dendi to be able to set up on kills. This means that realistically no one can go to the mid lane to even touch a creep unless there is a defensive support there. So either Shaker or Rubik has to be there to disrupt the combo of Lina as the moment they show on lane you can just tether in, run up with Yules. The Yules move speed in addition to tether should bring Dendi up to I would say like 460 move speed or something like that, maybe even more. And here's what you were talking about, the Dendi funny combo. Dendi leading in here with the Yule Scepter. Can he find the combo with the stun? Yes, he can. He's got all the good as well. Bring how low? How? Yellow tries for the ult, but it's not going to come out. Does get taken down there. Sineka so being credited with the kill. Super moving in with Fenrir. See if they can find something. He'll find the raises. We'll be able to find himself one kill. So you can combine more. Dendi looks for the light tries. going to be Duke Tower. The re-relocate back out is going to bring them back safely towards the mid lane. Good trade for Na'Vi, even though it's a one for one. They kill the enemy safe lane, they force rotations, and only have to sacrifice their Tusk for it. While their anti is free farming and should be able to deal some pretty decent damage to the bottom tier one. I don't know what TPs are available for Vici Gaming. Looks like Rubik has one. Uh, Shadow Fiend does not. Shaker does as well, but those two supports porting in will not threaten both at all. This guy, however, Together with them, might be able to repel him. He might just blink out here and just run away from, from Hal, but... Yeah, you saw Navi had to put in quite a bit of effort to kill the Luna, but they do manage. Yes, they they, they certainly needed more than just standing on his own. Well, Vici smokes up now. Moving towards this bottom tier one, it's, it's going to be a question of whether they want to go out into Navi's jungle, and the answer certainly seems to be yes. Super, FY and, F and Femria leading away here. Uh, they can, they've got to catch a Vorst out. They've only got really the Fisher. I guess they can get the Telekinesis as well. There might be enough time to lock a Vorst in place to burst him down. Art style with the defensive ping. Realizing that this must be going on. All heroes are missing from the map. This is a very obvious smoke play from Vichy Gaming. But even though they don't find a kill, they'll probably find a tower. Because all of a sudden, there are now five heroes bottom. If now we want to try to defend this, they're going to have to TP in two heroes. They're going to have to get a really good relocate. And the time it's going to take for them to set that up, it's going to be too late. Luna with the three-level Lunar Blessing could even pop a drum charge. This tower is not on for like Very, very quick pickup. It looks like they're just going to look to try and trade across the map. Dendi and Avors applying pressure onto the mid lane. And top lane, you've got Furnic pushing it right up towards the tier one. TP going to be coming in now from FY here on the Rubik. Just going to be able to zone them back. And top lane TP's coming out as well as we see Ice 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 come back with the defense. So not being able to find themselves a tower in return. But they do have the full five map now moving into the dire jungle. Maybe seeing if they can do anything about Ice 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 here. It's going to be quite a hard guild to find onto the Queen. They haven't got a huge amount of lockdown unless they can find the Light Strike Yule's combo. If Funnick gets in on him, he is toast. Like, he is actually just going to be blown up. But they don't know where exactly is. Suneko is behind enemy lanes. Looks like, <laughs> guess what? He is invisible again. <laughs> So, so I he, he knows something's up. The pressure's starting to be put to that. Gets himself out. Vici, however, at the same time, they're putting the pressure on this mid lane here. So even though they may lose the top, they may be able to find themselves the final tier one of the side of Na'Vi. The TP's now coming in. The side of Na'Vi, I'm going to let them have an easy one here. Denti's there, along with Funny. The use pressure the of Vici is it's just a little bit too strong. Aggressive weave here from uh, Artstyle. And it looks like Vici Gaming will back off, so... One tower for Navi. It did get denied by Ice Ice Ice, though, so they actually didn't really claim that much out of it. Still, definitely uh, a worthwhile trade for Navi, I guess you could say, since they don't lose their own tower, but well, they might very soon. Art style is oh, not in the right dead. position right now. Totally caught out there by the side of Vici with that smoke. Essentially tanking the gank, though. As uh, we'll see if Vici ever find anything more on this Navi. Just going to look to find themselves this top ring. And they just, they're not looking to fight at the moment. Oh, this tower is gone. They're four on five. There's a weave stolen by FY. They have the mech advantage. He has 13 one charges as well. For Navi to blow up super, they need to land their entire combo perfectly, and there needs to be no counterplay. And of course, there's going to be a counterplay. The moment they snowball in, there's going to be a fissure. Oh, Things are going to go bad. Oh, and oh, no, oh, he uses the yeah, snowball. He is very dead now. And then, yeah. Uh oh. One-way ticket to death. No! Fate bolt to the back. Almost got out of that <laughs> It was a close one, Sid. A close one. Mech now done, of course. And with this Vici, the pushing power they've got with this Luna is just unparalleled by Na'Vi at this point. They're trying to do something to the tier two on the top lane, but Vici and, and indeed but still with a stolen weave. It's actually doing it's a really, lot of work for them. Yeah. It's gonna force out a cliff. Meanwhile, Na'Vi doing their best to trade, actually dealing more damage right now than Vici Gaming are, so... Good exchange here for them. Dendi doing a lot of damage here, but just the overcharge and, of course, his attack speed from Fiery Soul. Now Hal comes in and should stop this attempt from Na'Vi. 
So Denton's backing off. Seneco tethering away, looking for the CP straight out as well. So Seneco's out. Denton should be A-OK -okay as well as Vici head back towards the mid lane. He's still got Ice 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 here on the bottom lane, trying to find some farm for himself on this clock. He's going to a 1k gold, so we'll see what he decides to opt for first in this game. I mean, for himself, does he go for the Yules, the Orchid, or straight up back end? So what is the best down here for Ice Ice Ice? I think it looks like an axe. He's running to the secret shell with 1200 gold. Oh, he's thinking about it. No, he couldn't click the button. Now he found it. There you go. So he's gonna, get, gonna indeed be going for the axe. It's like the axe. It's becoming a fury. It's, it's simply the new trend of Queens of Pain. Like, it, it, more often than not, now we see Agonis being an early pickup when you go back just a month, I think, almost every single time we would see Queens getting uh, Orchid first. Kind of the same trend we've been seeing on Storm Spirit with a lot of Storms picking up. Uh, the Bloodstone over Orchid early. Going for a little bit more of a tanky build here on Ice 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 with the Aghanims. Of course, when this is looking to become a fighting game a lot of the time, the low cooldown ultimate will be great. A little bit of extra damage, of course, doesn't hurt. I mean, and now her horse has got this Battle of Fury on top of the treads. What's the game plan here for VG Gaming? How do they stop the anti-mage farming? Do they just need to end the game before it gets to a certain point, or do they need to look for aggressive rotations into the Radiant Jungle? They might not need to end his farm as long as they get farmed themselves. Okay, so Neko's in this again, are you kidding? Like, I keep seeing this <laughs> like, It looks like he's out of position all the time. This is his third in this rune in this game, I think, if not the fourth. It's, I think it's the third. Just Kinda some... ridiculous here. Right, Pretty unlikely. But, uh... Um, but yeah, if Vichy Gaming trade farm, and both their Shadow Bean and Luna farm against the, the Lina and AM, I think they're gonna feel pretty confident going into the mid game, because in my opinion, when you look at the supporting cast, the, the Dire have a Shaker who can be massively impactful in the mid game team fights. And on the Radiant side, the IO is a little bit iffy in this game again because of the pairing it has. I don't feel like it's going to be that powerful in the mid game. And then the Dazzle can be super high impact, of course, with a great Grave and a great Weave, but most of the time Weave will take a little bit of time to build up. And Rubik is always just an X Factor. You, He's just good, always good mid late game if, uh, if you get the right steal. And FY tends to uh, be pretty good. Now we get another tower, though. They do. VG went for a very aggressive smoke all the way right past the Radiant Ancients. Now they're backing up. No, we need to be careful. They need to get the hell out of there. Just straight out. And Funnick will be able to get himself a Fisher. Ho oh, ho! Not quite soon enough. And Na'Vi do get away with, as you said, another tier 2. This is a very good play from Na'Vi. They, they get the tier 2 tower, they have zero casualties, they force a rotation, and Huos is just free farming the bot lane. This is pretty much textbook how they should be playing this game right now, because I think relocate ganks and just aggressive plays in general with the Lina right now are pretty risky. Since if they don't have vision of the defensive supports, it's very easy for Vichy to just turn the fight on its head. They will probably be looking well. to just map control, take towers, try to get superior vision so that Hoss can not only trade, so he doesn't trade farm, but actually out farms the opponent. And then they can hit a sweet spot around the 30 minute mark when Hoss uh, has two big items. Maybe take the fight at that point. Six for four at the moment, but still, Hoss at the top of that net worth. Denzi, he's closing in on the Aghanim Scepter. He's less than a thousand away from, from having enough to pick up the complete deal. At the same time, Ice 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 has got the point boost of the Ogre Club and, and working towards his penultimate item. So. Still a very close game here between these two sides. And it's still going to be very interesting to see how the Luna pans out as the game gets later. He's picked up the recipe for the BKB, has the club as well. Just, uh, just under 1,000 away from picking up that Mithril Hammer. So, with the BKB, we may see VG Gaming look for more fights and, and look to push down more lanes and, and take further to the uh, two towers. I think with the BKB on Shadow Fiend as well as Luna, they're, si they're just flat out stronger in team fights for a period of time. Uh, Dendi will as it looks, have the Ag Scepter ready at the same time. So if they time it very well, maybe they can get a key kill with a, with a level 2 Laguna with Ag. Um, but at the same time,